Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, July, for some reason I forgot the month, 3rd, 2020. <laughs> I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. It's been determined in length, episode number 654. And I must be getting old. I'm starting to forget things. As the youngest among us. No. <laughs> We're old. We're old. Oh, here's old people. You know, some people start early. I might be getting a little bit earlier. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. You're about probably, you probably have looked at my, at my watch, which only says... Three and sun should have looked at my uh computer which said seven three i don't know something like that <laughs> mistakes were made now it's time that we go into this Let's talk about sex. gary what are we talking about today Ooh. uh so instead of talking about the holiday that is taking place in here in our home country of the United States, we're just going to totally go in a different direction. And we're going to talk about awakening. <laughs> okay. That was the so, response. Sorry, I expect. Sorry oh, to get oh, metaphysical. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Gary, what's awakening? Well, okay, so here's the thing about the title of the show. It's the Let's Talk About Sex series. And I was going to say, it's I was going to call it Sexual Awakening, but I thought it was clunky and awkward to call it the Let's Talk About Sex, Sexual Awakening. Let's Talk About Sex, it was, Sexual Awakening. It was sex twice in a row. I thought that was a little weird. <laughs> Ow. It's redundancies. But you can also go say that people do that all the time, such as the ATM machine. Yes. True. True. Anyways, um, I thought we would talk about our personal histories um, from many years ago. Uh, God about... damn. Okay, wait. We're going to stop for a second <laughs> right now because, okay. Yes. You are only as old as you feel. Okay, just gonna call that out. Um, okay, but that's not that's not true at all, actually, honestly, personally, but just reality check. But like, I just want to be like, let, let's not keep calling us old because um, there are people that are much older than us, right? Like Gary. Oh. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh-oh. Gary, Gary, where'd your camera go? Where'd you go? Well, I don't know why you need to see me if I'm old, apparently. Oh, like, that, oh, that's oh. an issue. Oh. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the video, you will see a Skype logo. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see how it is. Yeah. Nope, not going to do that. Not going to fall. Son of a bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. More boom booms. 
Yes, yes, more boom booms. So <laughs> earlier, <laughs> if you saw me like stare off to the upper corner for a bit, it's because they were going off outside. But they're like those, I don't know what those are. Like they're not fireworks. They're just like sound grenades. Like they just make the boom. Like, cannons. Right, right, right. But the thing is, there was like Fire eight crackers. of them in a row. But I got really annoyed because I was like, oh, my God, people get some rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just going off, and it was like boom, 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 boom. I mean, it was just all over the place, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I just, anyways, Sorry. apologies to our listeners and viewers because yes, it is I July Fourth weekend officially, and there, <laughs> and so people are setting off fireworks in the neighborhoods. For those, for those not in the United States, this is the uh, American Independence Day as of tomorrow, which is the day that the uh, Second Continental Congress signed the Declaration of Independence. Which was giving us our individuality away from Britain, from the motherland of England. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Jeff. Thank All you. right. That being said, uh, let's talk about sexual awakening, okay? A um, couple of things we'll get out of the way. First, uh, we have Urban Dictionary. Oh, we don't have that sound anymore. Oh. Uh-oh. Wait. Uh-oh. Someone, someone's going hunting. Someone's going it. hunting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Urban Dictionary with Gary. <laughs> such oh a good God. callback. The nice thing <laughs> is, the sound file was actually labeled Urban Dictionary. That was nice Very and true. easy to find. One of my favorite all-time callbacks about that particular sound clip was when Chess said he was like binging and catching up on episodes that one time, this is a couple years ago, and he listened to like 20 some episodes or whatever, like over like the course of a couple of days. And he was listening to a radio ad and they played that very music. <laughs> he was like, the hell? Anyways. Um, anyway, so Urban Dictionary lists sexual awakening as, quote, the first time in a person's life in which they experience a euphoric feeling and desire to be physically intimate with someone. Another uh, way that sexual awakening can be defined is when you finally become one with your original essence, your primal energy, and you know your sexual organs. Hmm. Hey, hipsters. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I don't have my crystals with me so that I can analyze the history of my energy. <laughs> so here's what I was thinking about when it came to sexual <laughs> awakening. Do you recall when things started to align for you this is, this is probably really about puberty, but when you figured out that there was this thing about you that you that I guess I'll phrase it this way, that you figured out that you are a sexual being <clears throat> and what you wanted to experience, maybe not so much what your first experience was, but that you you did you had this awakening like I think of it in terms of like uh, an awareness. You're like, oh, I think this is the thing for me. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why I, I wanted to bring this up was recently with pride, I met a number of people who described themselves as ace, um, asexual and, and this, this concept about how like physical intimacy, isn't really something that they have interest in. Mm -hmm. um, sexual intercourse is not really on their radar and orgasm is not necessarily something that they um, are looking for. And it got me thinking about, you know, the difference in, in who we are as individuals. And, um, I am not a person who can, uh, I guess match to that or understand it necessarily because pretty much ever since I discovered what masturbation was <laughs> and about 
you know, an orgasm and the endorphin rush, the hormones, like it has just always been that, Mm -hmm. um, some pursuit of that, um, in a, in a way. So that's what got me thinking about sexual awakening. Um, it could be true for people. I think that they can have a sexual awakening to discover that they don't feel that way, Mm -hmm. that everyone else, like I remember when I was in junior high, I want to say it wasn't elementary. So it was either junior high or, or right at the very beginning of high school, somewhere in the seven, eighth, ninth grade years for me that people were kind of talking about intimacy and like sort of like sex or heavy petting and just these things. And, It was really kind of a foreign concept to me. And I don't know about today because it's a very different time here in 2022. But when I was going to school, you know, there was a lot of social pressure to be in the know, quote unquote, about what it was to, like, be intimate with another person, um, to have possibly lost your virginity. And what I find ironic about it is... One possibility is that a lot of people were talking smack and shit and they didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was more like, you know, myths on the the playground or at recess or in the locker room or whatever than any reality. Right. So that's kind of my preface. Like, that's, that's kind of where I was thinking about this in terms of, like, do you remember when you kind of started figuring that stuff out Mm -hmm. and what that experience was like? And then, you know, kind of where things went from there. I, I'm an only child. I didn't have brothers and sisters. So I didn't really have anybody to go to. And I also didn't really have many friends when I was growing up, when I was younger. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood with a lot of older adults. And their children were almost like at least five to six years older than me. So we weren't even really close in age or anything. So I didn't really have those kind of connections. In fact, the neighbors to the left, to the right, and two doors down to the right um, were all grandparents. Oh. Like, so like it was, it was just a different vibe, a different environment for me. And I was raised in a family. I was the oldest of all the grandkids. I was the first. So I was always surrounded by adults. Like I didn't really have peers um, mm. that I did a lot with. So that was really um, foundational in my discovery because I was very much on my own, so to speak. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, do you, do you, do you know Jeff or do you want me to go first? Uh, why don't you go first? I'm still kind of okay. thinking about how I want to respond to that because it's like, hmm. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I suppose that's I mean, literally what it is, is just me, me having... You're having that like contemplative, like thinking Just, things. Like, well, this this is a bit of a thinker of an episode. It's not something mean? I think that you yeah. can easily pinpoint. I mean, maybe some people can pinpoint to an exact moment, you know, and like ironically like fireworks went off you know all like the stars and the planets aligned and everything you know came together and it was just like oh you know, yeah. but i don't I don't know how many people have that. I think it's a journey. I think you start figuring some things out. Maybe mm-hmm. questioning. Yeah. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to this, what's probably going to be a very long, kind of complicated-ish story. So, um, so unlike Gary, um, I was, uh, I had brothers and sisters. I had, I technically had two older brothers and then I had a younger sister. Um, my older brothers were seven, are seven years older than me. Mm-hmm. Um so I am kind of quote unquote the middle child, but not really because there were four of us. But whatever, anyway. Um, I'm, and now I'm technically the youngest, but um, but uh, anyway, um, I can kind of pinpoint about when things started changing and the sexual awakening, as it were, for me. Um, so. Um, as I mentioned, I had older brothers. Um, so by the time I was in that like puberty area stage, we'll say like, like preteen 10, 11s, they were high, they were in high school. They were 16, 17, you know, 17 years old and up. So they were almost adults. Um, but growing up, they, you know, obviously hit puberty before I did mm-hmm. and were, you know, Honestly, to be blunt, I love you brothers, but I'm going to call you out. We're rather sexually active. 
from their teens on. So, okay. um, and I lived in a neighborhood that was very mixed and had a lot of kids of about and around the same ages. So you, so my brothers had teenagers that were around their age that they could grow up with and hang out with and talk with and do all the, like Gary was talking about the bullshitting about like sexual conquest and all that shit. So it was a lot of like bragging and all that stuff. So I heard a lot about that and knew what was going on, but I was still too young to kind of figure it all out. Mm-hmm. Then I hit middle school. Um, and I can think about the moment for me where, uh, things sort of changed. Um, and I became a quote unquote sexual being. Mm -hmm. Um, it's where your play time became more sexual as you're learning more and figuring out your, you know, what's going on down there and those kind of feelings. Um, as I mentioned, I had neighbors that were around the same age as I was boys and girls. Um, but one of my neighbors was, uh, um, had recently moved into the neighborhood. He was living with his grandparents and, um, he and I just got on like gangbusters. We went to their grandparents and my parents, we all went to the same church. So we were around each other a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were friends, and, you know, we lived in the same neighborhood. So obviously we, he knew each other, but, and we'd always, you know, hung out together and we hung out with kids again in the neighborhood. that are our same age as well, but you know, it was usually just him and I, um, during one of our, you know, how kids play like imagining games and such and doing like play stuff. We were playing kind of like, for lack of a better phrase, house. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact details, but this is the memory that's popping in my head as we, when you were talking about this toxic topic and concept. And I, again, even as a younger kid, would I tended to lean more towards feminine roles in those kind of situations because, again, it's pretend and it's all play. And the only, again, around my age that I had to go on was my sister, who was three years younger than me. And mm-hmm. we, did all, you know, play with Barbie dolls and all this stuff. I did all that. So I tended to be more the more feminine role. And in this moment, we're playing together, he and I, and we're husband and wife, and we basically have sex with, like, making out and everything. And it all kind of is going, and it, it kind of clicked because it felt really good. Mm. And we both really enjoyed what we were doing. Um, And it kind of went from there um, to the point where everything was going into place. So I, so he and I would play, play and have sex for three years, just about give or take all through middle school. And then we moved in, my parents divorced and me and my sister moved away. Um, I don't know where this guy is now. I've not been able to, after we moved away, um, we came back the following, after my parents divorced, the following summer, um, after they divorced, like a year later, um, me and my sister, because of the divorce and whatever, were kind of made to live with my dad for the summer, Mm -hmm. for a couple of months. And... When I got back, um, he wasn't there anymore. And it turns like, again, going through the great finding, remembering, hearing things from other people, I found out that um, uh, the reason he was living with his grandparents because um, I don't think his mother was around. And then his father um, was kind of there, but not really the greatest person. And, but in that year had, turned his life around and they were, he was living with them for a while. He would decide to live with his father for a while. Mm -hmm. So he was gone. Um, I did not get a chance to really reconnect with him until high school. 
because my high school was still in the neighborhood where um, my dad lived. Um, anyway, so one year, again, I think my junior year of high school, um, I happened to see him and he was working at the McDonald's nearby. And I just happened to see him and I kind of tried to say hello and try to have a conversation, but he's working and it didn't really work out. So, but again, that sexual awakening moment for me was those moments where I kind of realized that what we were doing, even though we were quote unquote pretending, um, Although we really, really weren't, because I would definitely had his dick in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> were were uh, that awakening and um, knowing that I enjoyed it. Now, on a flip of that, we are we were both, you know, as I mentioned, we both went to church together, um, and I had that issue in my head for. A while while I was awakened sexually mm-hmm. and learning about this and feeling these wonderful feelings, it was not good religion wise for me. Mm. Um, so it was somewhat suppressed, and both of us did it. Um, while I <laughs> I did not like date period. I'll put that period there. Like I did not date. Um, I did not go on dates with people, male or female, whatever. Um, and my four years of high school were me trying to repress or suppress that, those feelings. Mm -hmm. So I turned focus on my education and getting a grades and doing that as opposed to any like honestly, any real sexual thoughts. Did I jerk off all the time? Um, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but reality was I was trying, failing in some ways, to suppress this, these urges and feelings that I felt and believed were wrong. Mm. Um, and then I went to college. College changed everything. Okay. Always does. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, again for the for you know, middle school, high school, that middle school, those three years and knowing all of that, like having those moments where I know what he and I are doing and I know that I like it. And uh I really did enjoy it. And on the same time, at the same time, not feeling that it was wrong or not correct or not accurate um, was difficult. And, you know, it bothering me when he would go and, you know, he dated, he dated women. Um, He would go, you know, he was, he was, he was a handsome boy. (laughs) I'll put it like that. We were both, you know, I won't say we were both cute, but I think of the two of us, like he was, he was definitely a, he had, um, he was tall, um, tall, dark and handsome. I will put it like that. He was, he was, he was a um, darker skinned African-American. He always shaved his head, um, even at like, again, at middle school, like mm-hmm. this was his look. He already had decided like, this is what he's going for. Um, and just knew so much about himself, uh, more so than I think even, you know, us at that time, many of us at that time. Um, yeah. And it was, it was, it was good times, but it was complicated times. And it was confusing times, but it was that I could kind of, when you say like sexual awakening, that was what my pinpoint was for me. Right. I think that's fair. I mean, when, when I, what was interesting is, is so like my dad collected um, specifically Playboys, but he had a collection of pornographic magazines um, because when you when you focus on a specific publisher, you have a tendency to, to like trade and swap and buy like a box 
of mixed stuff. And then, so then there's other things. And mm -hmm. so I quickly discovered that like, while there were comics and playboys that were kind of funny, there was never really anything picture wise that I was interested in. And then when I saw other things like once in a while, a penthouse, a playgirl, especially, or like cherry, like these other titles, I would like, I, I quickly figured out what my deal was because if there was a man in it, I paid attention to the photograph. If the mm -hmm. man had an erect penis, that was like, the ultimate of like my interest. Um, and I had seen individuals not knowing what the circumstances were biologically, but they were intersex. And that was like kind of a mind opening thing. Like Interesting. to nowadays, there's a part of me that would think it was Photoshopped. Like, as we say, um, mm. You know, that someone had manipulated the photo because it was difficult to understand how that could exist mm -hmm. in terms of the physical, like, human body. But now that I'm, you know, a matured adult, it, it totally makes sense. Um, and so, like, that those were things that kind of helped in my journey. I don't, well, I say helped. Others might not agree with that. But it helped me determine some things for myself because I just wasn't sure, you know, I'd had a young male friend when I was, you know, single digits in elementary school that I'd been friends with, but I didn't ever really think about them in, in those terms. Um, mm -hmm. And they ended up moving away. Their whole family moved to another state. And I was really bothered by that emotionally because um, it was about the only friend that I had. And then, you know, when puberty and stuff came along, like I wasn't really sure of a lot of things and I started figuring some stuff out and I, I was really, uncomfortable because while I wasn't raised in a house of faith, um, there was religion around, you know, and it was, mm -hmm. you know, the, the eighties and the AIDS epidemic and, you know, all this messaging. Um, and I really absorbed that from just society. Um, yeah. and, you know, kind of lived in fear that, you know, I was probably going to die, um, you know, of a disease or, or some different things. Right. And yet at the same time, like, I was conflicted because I found that there were these, you know, basically male celebrities that I was attracted to. The big one for me was Garth Brooks. Um, that man mm -hmm. filled out a pair of jeans <laughs> in an amazing way. And I was totally jealous of his wife um, and was like, she gets to sleep in the same bed with that man. Like, and, and these are the thinkings of a teenager, early teenager. You know what I mean? Like you're, you, <laughs> you really need to have some life experience. I feel to, to have perspective and be like, right. Like you're totally going to be able to hook up with a celebrity, you know I mean? Like, but you don't know that. Like you're just, mm -hmm. you know, fantasize imagining and stuff. Um, and you know, the first time I had an orgasm, you know, masturbating in my childhood bedroom, I remember thinking that I did something. Um, I don't know how to phrase it. These aren't the right words. The only ones that come to mind is like I, that I did something wrong. But what I mean by that is like, um, <laughs> this isn't what I was thinking, but the, the light of thought was similar to I broke myself. And mm. by that, I mean, like I had not had a birds and the bees discussion. So I didn't know about what an ejaculate was. And I had not had, um, wet dreams or any of that. So the first time I had an orgasm and I had ejaculate and I came, I seriously thought something was wrong. Oh, okay. And I just didn't know how to feel about that because I was, I was very conflicted because in my sexual awakening, like my body is now rushed with hormones and I am feeling euphoric. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was like, what did I do? And am I going to die? Oh, God. Well, because, like, you know, yeah. none so, of that was really I, explained. I, and my I'm mother was tell. an RN. For the record, my mother was a registered nurse for over two decades, and she was not the one that had the talk with me. In fact, both of my parents kind of didn't really talk to me. Yeah. I want to tell you a, a funny side story. Sorry that your, your, your comments kind of reminded me of. No, it's fine. So when I was, again, like I mentioned, my brothers are seven years older than me. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, I remember one time and this was, must've been, I don't think I had quite hit puberty yet. Maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell again, memory at this time, cause we're all old apparently. Um, 
um, is failing me. But what I remember is I was watching, they were watching, we were, I totally guess, I guess we were all watching a porn. It was me and my brothers and our cousins, like all, it was, a, you know, the, the older cousins, like all of them around the same age. So they're all teenager ish age. And we're watching this porn and we're kind of laughing at it. Not, well, kind of, I think. I don't know why we were all watching it together. And I don't understand that now as I'm thinking about it. Like, why were we all watching the porn together? Mm. But I'm watching this porn with my brothers. And it is um, it is a straight porn. And the, the guy comes. In the video, in the movie, in the in the thing, and they show the big like shots, and it's a woman, and it's all over her breast or whatever. I don't even remember. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, "Where is all this lotion coming from?" Did you say that out loud? No. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> no, I did not say that out loud. Well, I asked because you said you were with you know others, yeah, yeah. so I wanted to know what their response was. You actually, yeah. you know, yeah. verbalized. I did it. not say it out loud, but that was my at the time. Have not having had any like real sexual um, conversations or any ideas about what what all of this was versus bees and what all this was, right. I was like, "What is going on? Why is there lotion?" And because it looked and <laughs> again, it looked like someone had taken like a lotion bottle and just like and let it squirt out. <laughs> now I I don't think I connected it to the dick at that point. But I think back on that moment, I'm just like, wow, Whew. you were a naive little kid. Mm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I had, yeah. <sighs> this is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm here just kind of like, just absorbing everything that you guys are saying about your sexual awakenings. And I, I realized something, or at least this is how I'm feeling. So maybe I'm perceiving things slightly wrong. I don't think I ever really had an uh, awakening. It just kind of happened. Like, when I was a kid, probably eight or nine or something. Yeah, there was the tomfoolery with mm -hmm. male friends, uh, especially. And then uh, with the advent of the internet and being that my dad worked at IBM, we were proud members of Prodigy. Oh, God. <laughs> and I was able to access Usenet sites. And go to alt.binaries.erotica.pictures. Mm. Hubby. So men. Dot older. Dot mature. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're what you're getting at, Jeff, is that you didn't really have like a moment. It just sort of happened. It just kind of happened. It. I. I, I don't feel like there's any specific. There's like I can't can't think of a specific moment. Because like you're saying, well, nobody talked to me about the birds and bees and stuff like that. And I'm like, right. maybe I just kind of like picked it up when they talked about procreation. Okay. <laughs> and well, they talk about, about semen in school. And I'm like, okay. But see, but see, that's even different because I didn't get any of that. Like when yeah. it came, when it came to those subjects, no pun intended, in in elementary school, the girls all got pulled into the auditorium for to watch the movie, and I guess they got like free um, products. I think they all got like maxi pads and tampons um, to take home. It was kind of this big secretive thing. And it made and all... a similar thing might have happened. I just don't remember it. Well, for us, I think I want to say it was like fourth or fifth grade, and all the boys went outside for recess. We had an extra recess that day, and. <laughs> That was it. Like the boys didn't get to watch a movie. There was no education. There was no explanation of anything. Um, it was Shut up. No, I'm serious. Like it was like, kind of a big mystery as to what the hell went down as to why the girls got to have this special assembly thing. Um, 
And I think some of the boys like asked some of the girls, you know, about like, you know, why they had these little bags of stuff or whatever. And they were basically told us none of their damn business. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, and that was it. Like that is nothing so wild. Yeah. Nothing ever really uh, developed out of that. Yeah, It was and around so, that time, the four, fourth, fifth grade or something like that. Yeah. When that, when, when the technical uh, explanation of how these things, because I remember like pictures and then, People giggling. Family life. I remember it like right. the exact thing that they, that it was called because it was such a fucking bo- never mind. Sorry, I know. It, um, it, it, you've talked I about mean, it it's, before it's the, this, the video series and stuff. It's the yeah. trying to be soften the blow. I don't know if that's the right word. Trying to to keep it. Yeah. PG thirteen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so even though we weren't there, I, I, yeah, I, 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 like I remember family life, and I remember those those classes, but they were actual like, I think I don't even know how long it was, maybe a week, but it was a. You had to get your parents' permission, and you 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 went to these classes, and um, I do remember the separation i will say that much i do remember like it was boys and boys had their class girls had their class and it was like things were just different i don't know because i don't but remember we... anything about like separating the boys and girls and i know there was just diagrams and such and and it was very technical about mm-hmm. how and... how procreation is done yeah and and then we went we did we did family life and then when we went to middle school, it was called something else. But that was the the years when we were in middle school. They didn't separate. It was just everyone in the classroom, and you kind of had these classes again on sexual health. Then um, you taught like I, I I learned what periods were, and I learned all about the uterus and and ovaries and all of that stuff. I learned all about it in these classes, and I remember these classes. I never had the, I don't recall the boys go out and play, girls mm. get set and do these things. Or if that was a thing, it was then reversed. And then the girls went out and then the guys did a class. Right. If, if Again, if I'm remembering. But again, yeah, I don't it, remember any of that. Of course, I yeah, could just, just shut off the entire part of my life and my brain. It's so weird. But Jeff, you have older siblings, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, I did find my brother's uh uh Playboy penthouse magazines at one point <laughs> in time. I remember when we were um again I again I don't think this was this was before middle school. So a lot of I I, I can again I can pinpoint sexual awakening to my middle school years. I'm talking like before that, where again, uh, one of the things I remember off the top of my head is um, um, one of the houses in the neighborhood um, was abandoned. Um, I don't know the story. There's a whole lot of stories apparently, but anyway, one of the houses in the neighborhood got abandoned and they like the family, whoever lived there kind of just left. And in this house, um, because it, wasn't lot because it was the 80s uh, um uh someone found like a stack of like porn mags and we were again mm-hmm. we were all again we we're all about like this is pre this is elementary school so fourth fifth grade third fourth fifth grade we found porn mags and i remember us looking at them at a young age we're on my and I, I to this day don't understand why it was my porch but we're on my porch looking at these magazines and then in come the teenagers the you know the older kids mm-hmm. including i don't i don't even think it was my brother but they saw that we were looking at these and they grabbed them really quickly and giggled and all that stuff and took them from us cuz they, they were like you're too young for this stuff and then they walked off and then i realize now why but they were going to go use them to probably masturbate and all that shit <laughs> But <laughs> like, but like, hey, you shouldn't have this masturbation material. You can't even check, can't even shoot yet. Yes, exactly. Whatever. And it just, it just, 
it's so interesting to me that Jeff, you or at least to your knowledge, maybe or your memory, you don't have those you don't have these these moments. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I can't even remember the first time I ever jacked off myself. I do remember uh, uh, using Kleenexes quite a bit. <laughs> I, yeah, I know I did not have a wet dream. I don't recall ever having wet dreams. Um, but I also was sexually active at like middle school, so. Um, <laughs> Well, and, and, I, and that's a corresponding thing in my mind. I don't know if it's ever scientifically been proven, but I have, in the few times I've talked with some some folks about wet dreams, I've determined that they never really masturbated. Hence, they had wet dreams. Which, right. like, to me, that was just, like, a matter of fact. It's like, if, if you are not masturbating and, like, ejaculating... Then the body will do something about that. It will basically. remove it for you. Well, <laughs> I mean, right? Like the you know the the body will um, empty out the sperm that it's produced, basically, because you know it's it's sort of it's not the same in a biological way. It's sort of similar to eggs and ovaries. Mm -hmm. The body produces them, you know. So. Uh, but that would, yeah, that was a, that was a, a thing. So, I mean, I think the point of this discussion is that we are, but three individuals who had different experiences and that's all it is. Like right. everybody's experience is unique to them and there isn't so much like ways to categorize them or label them. And we're also talking like it's between 30 to 40 years ago. And that's a real different experience than where we are today for okay. folks, especially with the proliferation and availability of like material mm -hmm. in the way of like what you can get on the internet, videos, movies, clips, things you can read, things you could watch, um, yeah. you know, the interactions and, and those kind of things. So it is, it was definitely different and I can, I can understand the challenge for people who grew up at a different time that doesn't, that they, they, they will not be able to understand the inaccessibility and how that affected your mm -hmm. awakening. Yeah. Um, like I remember specifically, so <laughs> my godfather had, I don't know. He was, he was more of a, a, a techie kind of person. Um, he was, he was the reason why I ended up getting a personal computer, like at a young age in our home. And we got the internet um, and went online and I was supposed to learn DOS, which I never really did because I thought it was annoying. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of this stuff about computer programming and different things came from him. And, and in the midst of that, he discovered like through some means, probably some chat, something or other or talking to others, how to build a device that allowed you to get Cinemax for free. It was basically a, a descrambler of the oh. cable coax cable signal. And so we had this funky, I don't think we have it anymore. It wasn't my mom's things. We had a coffee can. I kid you not this like, like probably about eight or seven or eight inch tall metal can that had the lid completely cut off on one end and then had been resoldered back on and inside it had like this screw and some wiring or whatever. And it had two coax cable things that you hooked up to like one from the wall and the other one went out to the TV and that unscrambled Cinemax, not a hundred percent, but like 90% or so. You know? oh. um, and the reason why that was important is because my mom worked, overnights as a nurse my dad my parents had divorced i think around when i was eight or nine he moved out of state so it was just my mom and i so when she was gone working overnights as a nurse i was up late at night and i would like turn on skin and back so i could watch like mm. lady chatter lovers <gasps> and oh <laughs> like those You're back those those <laughs> semi-poured 
adult semi like, porn semi like S E M I like not no, oh, honey those were porn <laughs> but you didn't even really see anything I mean that's not fair you saw tits and ass you saw boobies you saw women's buttocks but you didn't really ever see anything on a man and if you were lucky you got to see man's buttocks like you never saw his front genitalia oh he says as he complains Heaven. almost 40 years later but anyways <laughs> Um, but that was a big deal. That was a part of my awakening was to like watch video at like 1 a.m. when I'm supposed to be sleeping and going to school the next day because, you know, I'm watching this sort of descrambled, not always clear, not always color, sometimes black and white, like, you know, sometimes without sound, um, you know, erotica video mm-hmm. things or whatever. Yeah. 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 I remember. I remember. Oh, so the. Not the best thing. So the, well, no, I'll call it the best thing for a young um, pubescent um, kid was Cinemax, HBO, and Showtime, like, after dark. Like, Mm -hmm. just gay, straight, whatever. Like, you had these moments, these, these shows that were just, surprisingly like oddly erotic without like with no well I would like this one like that's why I call it kind of like it was porn because yes there was story yes they were like movies what have you quote unquote what have whatever but there was no like you don't really know the plots um one of my not favorites but the thing I remember the ones I remember the most um or the Emmanuel series. And I, I wish I was trying to grab it, try to look it up really quickly, but I cannot remember it. But uh, these were, I think, in the 60s and 70s, or maybe the 70s. And um, there we go. Maybe I'll find it this way. Um, and you were talking, like, there were no, like, and, and and male like frontal watch the Emmanuel series there were there was plenty there was a lot there was a lot to my okay. knowledge and memory but it was yeah but they they were oh okay hold on I think I found it nineteen oh there's a film in nineteen seventy four um huh <laughs> okay, yeah. This I think there's a few. There are a few. Anyway, but yeah, again. It's just it was just very much a thing for me. And maybe this is the ones. Oh, yeah. That is it. Huh. I'll have to look at this a little further, but apparently it was a there was a series called Black Emmanuel. Hmm. And this is the one I remember. Because I'm looking at the woman in the picture. Ha 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 ha. Don't mind me. I am researching porn. Stumbled. I've I've stumbled onto a memory. Having a nostalgia moment. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. This is it. Anyway. Moving on. He's been nostalgic. Yeah. yeah, it was. It's. It's. It. it yeah, I had to. I'll have to look at that later. I can't do it right now. <laughs> well, because if I sit here and start reading it, I'll. It. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm trying not to focus on it because we've got to. We're doing a show. So I mean, I think it. it it's interesting, but also really a good in, in, indicative. Uh, <laughs> Indicative. Yes. This well, this discussion about how we had very different experiences, um, and I think that that's true of everybody. Like everybody has their own personal journey and how they, you know, find things out for themselves and who they have experiences with, um, and what that means. Uh, what I would hope is for people that are going through that journey of discovery for themselves, is that they understand um, 
it's not a light switch. So I don't think it's just like it goes from off to on or from Mm -hmm. none to everything. Like it's, it's much more like a dimmer in that, you know, you make your own decisions in your own time about these interactions, these experiences, um, and then where you want to go with them and what Mm -hmm. the steps will be for that. Um, And I hope that, you know, people find what they want to get out of it. Um, yeah, like it, I feel, it, it is very different now than it was, you know, when we were younger. Yeah, and I feel like kind of with I, I use I keep I keep using Jeff as the as an example because I feel like you just yours wasn't yours was definitely like a dimmer switch because it just kind of kept going. It didn't turn on. It just sort of slid across the dial until it kind of got there. Yeah. I mean, well, here here's another another way I could also look at like sexual awakening. Would be like, sure. Here's one of the weird things is, I actually didn't know that I was gay until late senior year in high school to college. Actually, mm-hmm. I didn't know I was gay until until college for sure. I know the exact moment where that transition started. Okay. I was the, in, on. I was on the buy now, gay later plan. <laughs> oh, as we used to call it back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, because, it, it, and I really should have thought, like, based off of things that were happening earlier in my life, I should have definitely realized. Okay, the thing that I'm really looking for is in men, not in women. We kind of like the duh. <laughs> Uh, sort of thing. And I, I think there was a, a, maybe it was like a secondary awakening because I know the exact story and I'd like to tease uh, my uh, college friend Jen about it. But so I was by at the beginning of uh, college that at one point in time, I don't remember the full circumstance of how it happens, but Jen and I ended up uh, in her dorm room and uh, we start making out and then she gets to a point where she offers to take off her shirt and I can remember my synapses panicking being like <laughs> oh god I'm not ready for this no 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 and I just had I just like like I, I gotta go I gotta go and I booked it and then like for a week I just completely <laughs> avoided her and everything and she felt Throws like she her out. wrong and I, i'm like i'm sorry i'm not by mk and, and i think that's where everything kind of snapped for me yeah sort of clicked into place mm-hmm. and then i started going online and trying to find hookups yeah, I mean, when I when I was in junior high, I think I was in eighth grade, I started dating. Maybe it was in seventh grade. I started dating a girl who was a year ahead of me, um, who was very sexually mature, um, in biology, uh, but also I have a feeling was doing things um, that I was not doing. So when we were dating and I had dinner at her house, her parents and her sister left to go for a ride. To give us the house to ourselves. Shut up. No, I'm serious. And looking back on it, I'm like, well, that was a dumbass decision. Um, <laughs> but then again, her parents, honestly, her parents seemed kind of cool. So they probably knew what they were doing. Right. But still a dumbass decision. Because, like, <laughs> what if we actually really did have penetrative sex and she got pregnant? Like, what the hell? That didn't happen until her senior year. But anyways. Um, well, the getting pregnant part, I should say, uh, we never had sex. Like we, we were on the couch, we were making out, we were supposed to be watching a movie. We weren't watching the movie. Um, Netflix and, and chill before it was Netflix and chill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was VHS. Um, it was blockbuster and chill. Not even, it was whatever the hell was on TV. Jeopardy, some shit. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, um, but you know, we make out or whatever. And I really like kissing and I was like, oh, okay. Like, this, you know, this is fun or whatever. And then, um, she took her top off. And I was like, uh, okay. And I was a little uncomfortable. And so, you know, we're like kissing and stuff. And I decided, because somehow I knew 
like to like kiss her decolletage, you know, across her chest and work my way down. And the thing is, is she got really aroused by that. And so her breathing quickens and gets uh-huh. faster and a little deeper. And that alarms me because I think something's wrong. So I stop what I'm doing. And then she's like, is Roger everything still. okay? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, and I was like, okay. I'm so we great. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. You know, and so she, you know, I, I go back to what I was doing and then, you know, she's getting really excited and she's really enjoying it. And it's alarming me because I've never been with another person. Like I've never had any type of experiences with anybody. So I don't understand that actually I'm doing everything good right now mm-hmm. and I should continue. Instead, I think that her breathing and her like body and her responses are like giving me alarm bells. Right. I'm thinking there's something wrong mm. or and, but then again, like I wasn't explaining that why I was stopping or whatever. Like, anyways, of course we didn't go much further. Needless <laughs> to say, um, I don't recall how much longer we dated after that. I think we dated a little bit, but not very long. And then yeah. she went on and dated other guys. Um, and I'm pretty sure she had sex with them. And then eventually, in her senior year, she got pregnant before she graduated, and blah blah blah. Um, and we're still friends on Facebook to this day. Oh, I seen these. God, but it's really common. No, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. I was all excited about the fact that I was dating her initially because she was large chested and oh. he and he that was his thing like he likes women with big boobs he always has so all three of my girlfriends in high school um, were big chested so he you know was very proud of that you know his boy Ooh. oh that. your dad oh yes. honey yes oh and so. then when he came out of college like it's kind of ironic because it's like well I do like big er I like big chest. I like big chest. It's just (laughs) right. I like I like the ones with memory glands. Well, I like them to be hairy, and I (laughs) and I and I like them to be a little more muscular, so to speak. You know, right? Um, Yeah. So, like, as as uh, someone recently quoted in a chat, which cracked my ass up, dirty pillows. Which is a Stephen King reference, anyways, yeah. from Carrie. But um, oh. like you know, the whole the whole thing about like you know, a place to rest your head, kind of a thing. Yes, like, but th- but that took some development, you know, for me to figure out some stuff. And then when I was in college in my sophomore year, third year out of five years, is that when I finally like had sex for the first time? I think so. I think I was twenty, not quite twenty one. Is that what it was? I think, and that was a big deal for me because. Like I wanted to, you know, not be a virgin. And at the same time, like this whole age thing, I was very messy in college anyways, um, in my head. So, but anyways, the first guy, you know, I ever dated in college, so to speak, after being there for a couple of years, even though I came out my freshman year, we like had sex. Um, and, you know, so I gave him a blowjob and he enjoyed it and he came. Um, and then we had a big fight. <laughs> oh, I think I've told the story before about how we had a big fight because he was like, upset because uh, he was like you said you were a virgin and i was like i am and he's like no you're not and i'm like yes i am so we started having this disagreement and he was like he's like well you've done that before and i was like no i've never sucked a dick before like i've never i'm like you're the first and he's like you're lying and this is where i got bad because then I, was like, <laughs> I am not lying and he's like no one's naturally talented like that So here I am in my room of the residence hall on campus. It's just the two of us. It's dark. We had a movie on or whatever. I just got done, like, blowing him. And I'm, like, like, conflicted because I'm mad. And at the same time, I am, like, on cloud nine. Because I am, like, (laughs) this motherfucker just said nobody has this kind of talent. And I was, like, but I do. bitch, you're wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And then on the flip side of it, he's calling me a liar. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Anyway, so we kind of had a fight or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, but uh, it was – so it was a wild kind of thing. But but the other thing for me was I had spent – what I think I was, what, 20 at the time, I believe. So the, the thing is is that I had spent years researching. Like I had seen – 
you know, I had seen videos. I had watched stuff on VHS. I by that time I had been ordering um, buy porn from Adam and Eve, oh, like like wow. back in the day, like Adam. Uh-huh. Mayo, um, I was, you know, I had uh, seen lots of like pornography, like still images and stuff. So like, I understood the context of what a blowjob was, even though the name is mis like referenced, but. You know, it's like I I totally knew what to do. And so to me, it was like, well, of course you could like be good at it if you research like what the story is. You know, you have some preface, you have some background and some understanding. You know, I've never made pad thai before, but I could probably figure it out. You know, um <laughs> yeah, there's there's some skill to it, but you know, anyways, long story short, he was um <laughs> Hi Lloyd. What a hell of a time to come into the podcast. Um <laughs> So, yeah, it was kind of a wild situation. Um, and what's ironic is, to this day, uh, we are connected in social media. I follow his naughty Twitter, which is quite hysterical to me. Um, and I'm pretty sure we're friends on Facebook. We saw each other. Uh, anyways, we didn't stay together that long. Like, it was very complicated. I thought we were exclusive. I thought we were dating. We actually weren't really dating, technically. <laughs> we also weren't exclusive. Um <laughs> This is the theater program. I found out he was sleeping with pretty much all the theater department, and I got really upset about that. But he was also very accelerated. Like, it hit me, you know, he already knew who he was and what was going on. So, like, having sex with other people wasn't a big deal to him. And I was still under this whole, like, model that had been sold to me. The that I was... whole mindset, yeah, that <laughs> weird, like, like, you date someone, you have sex with them, you're together forever, you get married, you have two and a half kids, even though you're both guys, but whatever. Um, no, no, right, but that, that was the Americana concept, right? Like, you were going to have yeah. a home, and you were going to have some pets, and you are going to have some kids, blah, blah, blah. And so I had bought into that. Like, that was part of the reason I was going to therapy on campus, because I was also very conflicted about, like, you know, being homosexual while being gay, and, like, what the future meant for me, and a whole bunch of things. So, mm-hmm. um, and he yeah. was in a whole different place, a whole different time. In his journey, he'd already been having sex with people. So, like, to him, this was just having sex. No mm-hmm. strings attached. Like, nothing else. It wasn't romance. And it wasn't really dating. So we were we were very differently coming to this um, in some places. And that was another part of my awakening, of my journey, to be like, oh, sex isn't about love. It can be, but people have different viewpoints of that. And I was coming from the more american traditional concept of you know you have sex with somebody because you care about them and you love them now fast forward several decades i've realized about myself that i'm demisexual i like to have a connection with a person before i have sex with them um now that isn't to say that i won't have anonymous sex with a person but that's a different circumstance like that is like about me and you and an orgasm like at right and it's only you know a very short period of time and we're both in this moment together probably because you were expecting to get off and i am willing to help you get, get there. you off right <laughs> i'm um, willing to get you there but outside of that like if it's not that finite that narrow of a situation i gotta have a connection with you like i need to know you i need to feel intellectually stimulated by you i need mm. to that like you are funny and like we click in some ways and we're really interested in each other and i've probably driven a lot of um individuals most i would say probably men crazy because they were interested in me but i wasn't picking up on it and so i'm having lots and lots of conversations and like and they're just like (laughs) <laughs> for the love of everything, we've been talking for three or four fucking hours. Like, can we just have sex? But I'm not aware of that, and we're not picking up on it. And I'm not, you know, I'm just having, you know, good conversation with another person because it's not, no pun intended, it's not coming together for me. So, I just think that's hilarious. Okay. No, I think it's hilarious because considering all the, like, um, well, we'll just we'll just do the on the roads and claw. We'll just put that just. Right, drop that down. <laughs> Where it's like you're getting home at like three, four o'clock in the morning because you've been sitting and having conversations with people. And I don't know if the people at the time were like, like I just want to have sex with you, but it was just kind of this like moment where you're like sitting there and having this conver- like talking. Right. And we know we all know Gary likes to talk. We 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 won't we won't say that as a 
bad thing, but it's just like no. But that's very true, though. Like I, I'm a big conversationalist, mm-hmm. period. But it does get complicated when there's more going on, and I'm interested in a person. Like there are people right. to this day that I have had some really good conversations with that I do want to have sex with, but I just never brought that up mm-hmm. in, in conversation with them. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't broach that. And part of it is, you know, a me thing. I still carry at this stage in my life about, um, you know, body dysmorphia and psychological issues and just, you know, all sorts right. of stuff. Um, right. But, yeah. you know, then again, like I said recently, there are moments where you have a really good experience with somebody and you're like, I got it. <laughs> right. And so yeah. you're just going to keep just on keeping on. on and <laughs> Get what so, you yeah. get going and go. Get what you got get, got to get done and go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very interesting um, for me personally. Um, other, after middle school, as I kind of mentioned earlier, like after middle school, all like sexual, I won't, no, that's not true. Chris. Any intention to try to have sex with another person was stamped to the ground, stomped on, kept repressed as as much as possible because I did not want to be honest with myself um, about my own true desires. Um, So high school for me was, like to be blunt, was lonely. Mm. Um, I would go to school, go to classes, have lunch. And I had like friends that I would, you know, hang out with at lunch and stuff every now and then. Um, Although we kind of all had the same lunch period. So I did have people I would like sit at lunch with. So I wasn't alone at lunch um, to my senior year, but that's another story. Um, And then I would come home, I would do homework, you know, watch TV, me and my sister, um, you know, would would do stuff, hang out, watch movies, what have you, those kind of things. And then I'd go to bed and then wake up the next day. And then on Saturday mornings, I, I even though I was still in high, I was in high school at this point, I would still get up and do like Saturday morning cartoons and and then whatever like needed to be done around the house. And then Sundays were church, and then dinner, and then. Sunday night movie, whatever, with mom and family. That that was it. And then Monday would roll around and it would just kind of repeat. Um, I never had girlfriends. I never had, uh, again, beyond that, those times in middle school, I never had sex. Um, I do recall, you know, jerking off. I do recall, like, grabbing what I could of male nudity. And male, like, semi-nudity, like, um, uh, catalogs were my thing. Like, grabbing, like, like seeing men in underwear, um, uh, swimsuits, underwear, those kind of, like, pictures uh, were my thing. And I remember keeping a couple of catalogs under the bed, and those would be my, like, material. Um, we had the internet... Um, But I don't really recall, at least in high school, really using it for those reasons. Um, And then between my junior and senior year of high school, I went to, I think I've talked about this before, Governor Scholars up here at NK, North Kentucky University. Um, And that was my first real, like, chance to look at porn. Well, not, that's not true. Meaning, like, gay male porn. I'll put it like that. Um, where it was just men having sex with men are just images of men. And the things that drew, that I grab, gravitated to the most were particularly, like, the hairier men. The more her suit, not always, again, this was, like, 90s. Um, not always, like, you know, chubbier men, but definitely like Harry, um, Al Borland, um, uh, 
Richard Karn from Home Improvement. That's like, that was my epitome, if I remember that. Um, but you, getting to that moment in that middle, that high, that junior, senior year between that time at that, that program, mm -hmm. um, definitely learned a lot about myself and being around other <laughs> phrase like older or kids around my age boys around my age and be, them all of us being basically away from home so we're at this program we're there for I think five weeks and I I could probably I don't I don't think it happened. I'm pretty fucking sure it happened. Like people were were playing around and messing around, even though it wasn't a thing. And we were all there because we we're all super smart. I still think you know, you're away from home. You're at a you're in a college you know situation. There were people that were dating and like holding. They were able to hold hands with you know other people, mostly men and women. But you know, still, it was probably happening. Um. But the thing for me that I got that seat year, that those five weeks was I got internet and true internet and was able to look at pictures and look at things and download and print images. Um, I printed a lot of porn. <laughs> and I, I will own that because th there was no, there were no like, rules it was it was there was nothing holding you back from it um was it was so, this the time of laser printers or did you have the dot matrix <laughs> this was still this was still this was laser at that i think at that point um yes definitely laser because i'm trying to remember some of the images there's an image picture in my head that i remember being very quote unquote clear it was kind of pixelated but you know anyway um but I, part of the program was you had these sessions um, where you were able to just kind of, it, it wasn't, I don't want to call it therapy because it wasn't really therapy. It was just kind of meant to be like open forum, have conversations with like, you had a group of like eight or nine that you're all kind of in the same group together. And you just sort of like, were able to like talk about whatever. Um, you had a person that was guiding everything, and maybe they were a quote-unquote guidance counselor, but it, it wasn't a therapy kind of thing. It was just like you were able to kind of talk about whatever you wanted to talk about. Uh, you also were provided a journal that you um, were asked to write into. And I know several of the things that I wrote about were me having and coming to a conclusion about what I was feeling. Um, I don't like calling it by now gay letter, but that was what I had to do to justify what was going on in my head, which was, yes, I'm attracted to men, but I cannot just be attracted to men. I have to be attracted to a woman because that's what God intended. Damon puts in big, heavy quote marks. Um, and I remember writing it down and kind of getting a little bit of relief for it from it. But did I ever once act on the quote unquote urges that I had for women? No, no, mm -mm. no, not, not once. Nope, never. Mm -mm. I can say to this day, I have never been sexually intimate with a woman. Um, when I <laughs> went to college, um, my freshman year of college, um, I had... Again, I had basically 24-hour access to the internet. Yeah. 
Um, mm-hmm. Having that and being away from home gave me the freedom, I believe, to realize a lot more about myself and having conversations with other men who have sex with men. Granted, it was all online and I was over 18. Um, but having these conversations with these men um, really awakened their truth um, with me. And boy, howdy, did I act on it. Um, <laughs> um, I, had, I had boyfriends. Um, I had relationships. I had, you know, but as I think about it, and I think about the boyfriends I had while I was in college, almost every single one was some form of an open relationship. Um, I was al- I was allowed, able to still explore myself and things sexually while being in a quote unquote relationship with a man. Um, my first relationship was with a guy who was married to a woman. Um, that was, I think 16 years, my elder, um, maybe a little less than that, but he was older. And, um, that was only for a couple of months, but it was interesting to me, like having a person, a relationship, a boyfriend and being able to actually say that and be happy about it. Um, now reality being what it was, it wasn't really right or good. It was kind of super fucking shady and really, really um, awkward, uh, especially when I found out, because uh, these things happened gradually over time. He did not tell me when we first met, because um, not only was he married, he was married with a kid. Um, and yeah, <laughs> this was all kind of hidden and um, again, not again, not the greatest relationship, mm-hmm. but it was a relationship. So there's that. But I will say it did teach me things. And again, realizing this awakening about myself at that time was truly the best thing that could have happened um, because it allowed me to come to terms with who and what I was and being okay with it. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think, as I was saying before, I think we, we all kind of find our our own way and, and, you know, we have some experiences with folks. I mean, I, I think I've talked about it before over the years. I had a whole period where I went to adult bookstores a lot, um, you know, and I was using that as my way of, like, dealing with my sexuality and my own self-worth was a big piece of it because it was like I was tied up in this whole thing like, oh, by going to, you know, cruising areas and, you know, um, hooking up with guys and, you know, getting them off. I saw that as like a piece of like my value, my worth, like my purpose that I was, you know, giving them, you know, an opportunity to have an, an orgasm. But it got really messy because it was like if I got turned down or I didn't really like hook up with anybody, then I took that very personally, you know, as opposed to more like I'm just not their cup of tea or whatever kind of a thing. So yeah, it there's I think there's a lot of different experiences for folks out there um in different ways along those lines. You know. Right. <clears throat> oh mama. Okay. <laughs> Time for the fireworks to go boom boom. 
they have been <laughs> for a little while now. Right. Strangely, not down here in Texas, but that's another matter altogether. Mm-hmm. Any final thoughts? Because I think I've said my piece. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I I just hope that, you know, people realize, um, at least from our discussion that, you know, everyone has different experiences and they they Mm -hmm. determine kind of their own things. But, you know, we'd like to hear what your thoughts are or your experiences if you want to share them with us. You can forge your own path. There's no, as Gary kind of mentioned, there's no light switch and suddenly you realize everything about yourself. You're going to learn over even years of, of, of living what you find interesting or attractive or where your urges and what have you comes from or you may find that you don't really have those urges you know asexuality is a thing Mm -hmm. um so don't be you don't need to feel bad or wrong or awkward um you don't need to feel bad or wrong or awkward when you kind of discover that you're not having those same sexual feelings that your peers are having. While we've kind of had these, we've talked about all of our, you know, you know, discoveries and, and, you know, internets and, and everything. Um, you may realize like, ah, that's not me. And that's okay. okay. That is okay. Everybody if learns not- differently. Everybody uh, becomes sexually aware differently. Mm-hmm. Are non or lack there, thereof. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think, you know, it's been years since I first heard about demisexuality. Um, but I now, I don't want to say understand it fully, but I understand it more than I did when I first learned about it. Because it was when I first read the word, I was actually at a um the LGBT church here in Cincinnati, uh, one of them. And I was, they had a, it was Pride. We, I think we were doing our Pride concert and they had this um, bookshelf of books and they had big on the bookshelf, all of the letters. So they had, it started with LGBT and then it had all these other letters next to it, but it had what the letter stood for. And when it got to the D, huh, um, it mentioned in my sexuality and I was like, what, what is that? I've never heard of that before. Where, why is this on here? And fortunately, they had a book that had what it was. And I will own at that time. It didn't click. But through meeting people who are demisexual, learning about their experiences, and, and trying to kind of really listening and understanding it, I get it more. I get it a lot more than I did. And that was 10 plus years ago. And I think we're still learning more about what all of these things are. And don't limit yourself to, don't limit yourself to what you think you need to be, to be quote unquote popular or to be, um, um, what you feel is what everyone else is doing. If you're not feeling it, don't try to push it. Definitely don't try to push it. It's gonna lead to awkward moments as Jeff Jeff and Gary have mentioned with their experiences with women. Um, (laughs) These super awkward moments where they have the runaway. You know, sometimes sometimes women are, are key to helping you figure out where you're sexuality life <laughs> even if it means not with them i don't want that you know the the phrase you don't knock until you try it i tried it not my jam right and and i think that's key that i hope everyone understands is that you will have experiences and figure out that's just not what i'm interested in you know and it, it, I remember this was kind of a bigger thing in the 90s, the aughts and, and you know, about how some men don't enjoy blowjobs. Some men don't enjoy anal, you know, like there's there's just different things and there's nothing. It's not a right or wrong. It's just their experience. 
And so, you know, we've discovered and talked about some of these topics over the years um, in different ways. So I think, you know, perfectly valid. Yeah, I I think the bigger thing is that you have experiences and you determine that for yourself and go from there. Guess what? That's the end. Of the fireworks? (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I haven't no. made any fireworks. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, know. I know. I know. The fireworks. Yeah, just Damon. I don't know what you're talking about. I hear the, the boom coming from one of you two. Oomp. Oomp. Anyways. If you would like to let us know about your sexual awakenings, you can do that in various ways. You can, you can do that over on our website, CubsOutLot.com. Shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL or join our entourage chat and telegram at tinyreld.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning or recording these shows and what the topics may be, you can follow our Google Calendar at tinyreld.com slash calendar dash col. If you would like to get very accoutrements, such as a, a Consent is My Foreplay shirt, which, by the way, there's brand spanking new Pride Consent is My Foreplay shirts. So <laughs> and mm-hmm. Dazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, some of the designs we have on there were designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, or if you just want to send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Help make this show a little bit better. You can subscribe to us and review us, rate us, because actually the more people that rate us uh, and even review us will get us a higher up so more people can find the show. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Audible. Uh, pretty much anywhere where you can find podcasts. Yeah, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Step Box Puppy Box Cub Box something or other or Windgem W Y N D G E M on Twitch where we play Bears and Dragons, which is a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sitting around and playing Dungeons and Dragons. Damon. Okay. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most very related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gibber73. Um, and my Twitter, most related probably to the podcast, is gabra 73 xxx And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Happy boo-booms. No. Nope.